going to be calculating the muzzle velocity of a paintball gun. Alright, the things we're going to be using today are a paintball gun with a hopper, paintballs, a paintball mask, CO2, fishing weights, and a ballistic pendulum. Now, this ballistic pendulum will be uh, used later in the video to show the height difference at which the can will travel when shot with the paintball. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about how the paintball gun uh, works and how the paintball is propelled out of the paintball gun. Alright guys, I just want to talk a little bit about how the paintball gun works and how the paintball is propelled out of the barrel. Now in our barrel of the gun, there's something called the valve tube. And this valve tube runs through the bolt, spring, and hammer to the gas inlet valve. Our tank of compressed air is connected to the gas inlet valve to provide the propulsion needed to expel the paintball. Now when the gun is cocked, a paintball comes into the barrel from our hopper, and when our trigger is pulled, it releases the spring. Now this allows a burst of air to come through the gas inlet valve and launch the paintball out of the barrel. Alright guys, now that you know a little bit about how the paintball gun works, Sam is going to tell you about how the physics is applied and how uh, he's going to calculate the muzzle velocity uh, for the paintball. Alright, once we have had a successful fire into the target and the paintball was not broken on the fire, we will calculate the height difference uh, of the original height and the final height and we will plug that into the dry formula for conservation of mechanical energy, which we will then plug into the dry formula for conservation of momentum to get the initial velocity of the paintball or muscle velocity. Now we're off to the fields for our first test run. I see your dirty face Behind your collar, what is done in vain? Truth is hard to swallow, so you pray to God to justify the way you live. Since our previous can blew up, we replaced it with a more durable Pringles can. Alright, this is the new test. We replaced our old plastic bottle with the new Pringle can. I really don't think it's gonna be uh it's gonna weigh enough, but uh we're gonna find out. If not, we're gonna add some of these Cabela's three eighth ounce weights to the, the Pringle can. Here it goes. Since the Pringles can held up but was unable to stay on a steady path, we will weigh it down using fishing weight. We're going to try it. I weighed down our Pringles can. It is now a lot more heavy. I put 16 3 8 ounce uh, weights in there. So we're going to try this. 3, 2, 1. Out. Safety. Alright. Three, two, one. Uh, I'm into the 25 inside of our uh, Pringles can here. Um, I put a little uh, piece of wood behind here to try to stabilize it swinging back and forth to see if we can get a more straight path up, uh, less moving. Okay, here we go. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. What is love? Since 25 fishing weights did a good job controlling the swing, we are now going to do another run. Alright everybody, this is going to be our uh, third take. 
of 25 3 8 ounce weights. We're going to give this a try. See if we can uh, get that ball to not break. Threw some extra foam in there. If you can see that green foam. We get this to work. In three. And if you see that right there, that's an unbroken paintball. We successfully kept this paintball unbroken. Now we used that last video to calculate the height difference, which was 0.51 centimeters. Uh, when we plug that back into the derived equation for conservation of momentum, we were able to calculate a velocity of 101 meters per second. And that's 226 miles per hour. Rise when I get